here, many of my friends, colleagues, and cohorts refer to me as Lenny. So I want to get one thing straight first. Linwood is the person who has to put on the navy blue suit. <laughs> Linwood is the gun runner for the arts. Lenny is the artist among us and the captain agent. I will play both roles tonight. Uh, my father taught us public speaking at the dinner table and he reminded me to start every evening by speaking silently. So tonight is about unity. Tonight is about animating democracy through civic dialogue and civic engagement, leading to a clearer and more comprehensive solidarity where public art shapes the landscape, defines the sense of place, advances and engages the community and enlightens the spirit. We hope that you are inspired by tonight's presentation. Now, inspired root word is spirit, to put the spirit in you. And so we'd like you to come into the Bantuba, a West African word for the dancing ground or the open space where dialogue and communication takes place with the spirit of engagement and with the spirit of dialogue, not pushback. We hope that we can create a sense of companionship with you this evening. And since I am on a wordsmith uh, launch tonight, I have to tell you that the word companionship comes from the Latin words compile to break bread together. So we're going to bring some intellectual bread tonight together. I am the chair, thanks to the mayor, the city council, and our city colleagues of the Public Arts Advisory Board. And here with my colleague John McGrann, Barry Kornhauser, who is both a member of the board and executive committee and a co-host for this evening in this wonderful space. Naomi Young, who could not be with us, and we thank Chris Dell for being the glue of the equation that brought us together as we met in COVID. As you know, the city is midway through this process of public engagement about the Yule Plaza, a public art space, and I need to tell you what you already know, and that is that public art has a slightly different responsibility to space and time than visual arts or gallery arts or music quality arts. Public art helps shape the common ground that we share, the neutral ground that we pass through, the open space that we shape together, that equation of how art shapes our lives as we move through the city in our daily times. Artists have been called forth to make art in lots of different ways, from small intimate cameos to great mural walls, but public art requires a sense beyond the mere creation of a vision and an idea, but the manipulation of ordinary space in extraordinary ways. And so we have sought not only creative artists who have strong vision, but artists who have been successful in the manipulation of public spaces, ordinary in the sense that we pass through them daily in extraordinary ways, that each time you see them, you're filled with a sense of awe. I would say, see the word awesome. <laughs> but we want all 
some hard work. This, uh, that lasts not only for the life of the building, but for the memory, so that epic memory is created in public art. And so we set out tonight to talk about where we are now and where we are moving forward as we create a piece of work that, that challenges the lessons of that work, our epic memory about place and time. I am a partner with a great executive committee, and I usually get the, the role of the interlocutor, but the gentleman who always is the equal sign, who brings the equation of our dialogues to fruition, is my friend and colleague, John Grant. And we'd like to have John speak just about some meeting norms that we're going to uh, uh, use as road signs for civic dialogue and animated democracy tonight. John? Thank, thank you, Lynn. Thank, I, you're always, I, I, I feel, I always feel lucky that we get to have you as the chair of our board. And, and I would say to the people who are here, if you aren't acquainted with Lenny, um, do yourself a favor and in your free time, learn a little bit about Lenny and, and his career and you'll realize how fortunate we are to have him in the, the Lancaster community. Um, a couple things to, to touch on uh, before we get the meeting started and, and introduce the artists. Um, first, it is important to note that, that this, while the city is facilitating this meeting, this is being prepared, this work is under contract with the parking authority. They were selected by a committee of people um, who were affiliated with the parking garage project. Um, the city's public art manager participated on this committee, but the city did not select the artist. Um, so, and, this, and the artist contract is with the Lancaster Parking Authority as part of their construction project that's ongoing right now um, at the old plaza. This will be a permanent work of art integrated with the building. And uh, as Lenny said, public art in, in this type of an application is, is different than some of the art that we might be more commonly familiar with. Um, and, and we feel lucky to have our art studios as our partner for this. So in a moment, I'm gonna introduce them. Um, they're, as part of the way the evening is gonna go, they're gonna uh, provide some background on how we got to this point um, and, and their participation in it. They're going to present three conceptual renderings, and then following their presentation, uh, there will be a Q&A opportunity, um, and, and the way that's going to work is, if you, on your way in, there was an opportunity to take a comment card. If you haven't gotten one of those, Milzy Carrasco was back in the back in the red shirt and the black jacket, and uh, she can make those available to you. So what we would ask you to do is uh, to put your comments or questions onto those cards. Milzy will be circulating at the, after the presentation to collect those. Uh, I will be back up on stage after the presentation to help facilitate that portion of the meeting. And you know, if any of you have been you know, at any of our touch points along the way that, that, that I've been involved with, you know, hopefully you've heard me say this before. You know, this is, the, the, the purpose of this meeting is, is to hear your feedback. And you know, the, more, the more of your feedback we hear, the more authentic that is, um, the, the better it's going to inform, you know, where we go from here. So, you know, uh, you know I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, of public engagement and, and public participation, so we're glad that you're all here, and, uh, and I would encourage you to, uh, to make sure that before you leave tonight, you, you speak up and tell us uh, what you think or what questions you have. There will, I'll, later in the meeting, I'll explain the other ways that you could do that if, if, uh, if you prefer to do that in a different way away from this meeting. Um, and now I'm going to take a moment and introduce Roberto and Rosario. R&R &R Studios is the collaborative office of Roberto Bahar and Rosario Marquat. Uh, it is a multidisciplinary practice weaving together visual arts, architecture, design, and their city. Celebrated as one critic put it as architects of hope, their works propose encounters of stories and spaces which alternate between the personal and the public, the quotidian and the extraordinary, the poetical, and the political. R&R Studios works to erase boundaries between art and life 
and they suggest imaginary solutions for a better world. Roberto and Rosario are known for creating social sculptures for public pleasure. All Together Now is in downtown Denver. They created the biggest end in the world in Miami, the living room, which is their my iconic Miami home turned inside out. They've created public squares in Mexico and Copenhagen, and most recently, the Same Mucho, which is their super billboard at Coachella Music, Music Festival uh, in 2016. All of these suggest a world of possibilities where the fantastic becomes part of everyday life. Their award-winning practice has been published in over 250 publications worldwide, and they've exhibited in solo and group shows in museums, institutions, and galleries in America and Europe. They have received American Institute of Architects awards, and American for the Arts selected their projects among the best public art of 2007 and 2013. Roberto and Rosario have known each other since childhood, received diplomas in architecture from the Universidad Nacional de Rosario in Argentina, and I, I apologize if I didn't pronounce that correctly, and later studied at the Legendary Institute for Architecture and Urban Studies in New York City. Roberto has been a visiting artist at the Getty Research Center in Los Angeles and a visiting professor at Harvard University and Cornell University, and together with Rosario, visiting artists at the American Academy in Rome. In 2007, they published a peace project. In 2011 and 2013, M, the Living Room and Museum Works, the first of three volumes of r, &R Studios Incomplete Works. Roberto and Rosario currently teach at the University of Miami School of Architecture. My pleasure, and, and I'll add, when they were here in Lancaster uh, a month and a half or two months ago, um, I had the opportunity to, to spend a little bit of time with them after the presentation, and, and they're really some of the most, most uh, fun and interesting and enjoyable people that, that you'll get to meet. So my pleasure to welcome Roberto and Rosario. <laughs> This morning, I want you to remember throughout the evening, Bantu Bak. It means the common ground where we dance together. Friends, let the dance begin. Thank you so much, Jimmy and John. Thank you so much again, Jimmy and John. And uh, thank you to each one of you for being here, for being here tonight. I know that you're we know the Sunday night and you're making an effort Friday night to be here with us and we think indeed it is, a, it is a testament indeed to what we have seen all over time and that is, uh, that is most important and more, most fun for us to see and that is the commitment actually that we have witnessed the citizens of this town have for the city. It is, uh, it is really fantastic and it's, uh, and it's unique and it's something that uh, we enjoy um, we enjoy, we enjoy, that's one of the reasons why we enjoy working with you, with you all. We want to thank uh, the mayor for, for, for bringing us here, for, for being part of this project. Of course, the, uh, Larry Cohen as well, you know, from the Portland Authority. And uh, again, each and every one of you for being, uh, for being here. We, um, let's begin with the images. And the first image, of course, the lines a little bit. Give us just a moment. Thank you. Uh, the first image is, is your town, a beautiful land, land, Lancaster at the very very center at the very center of, of town. So we we um, we begin by, by kind of taking you through the kind of process. We're very thankful actually to the Portland Authority for bringing us here to town. Larry Cohen, you know, the director of the Portland Authority for bringing us to town and, um, and uh, giving us the opportunity to spend time, time in town. Um, first of all, because it's really fun, it's really enjoyable, and we got to know one of the most beautiful cities in the USA. And, uh, and uh, what we saw was very, very important because it kind of provided the context to, in a way, to, 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 to mine from. I mean, it's the, the project, hopefully, you will see somehow the project represented in the images that you see. First, the, the, the domestic reality, you know, the, 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 
you know, the towns, the, the homes of the city were very influential. And of course, as many of you said later on, in some of the, um, the, uh, the encounters that we had, you know, it was important for us to, to kind of have clarity about the color of the city, you know. And uh, pretty quickly we discovered that red was very important because of the Greek that takes, uh, that, that is here, there, and more or less everywhere. And, uh, and very quickly we realized that as, as, as once I become more sensitive to, 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 to the red that we see all around town, we discovered that red comes in many, in many different towns and that in fact the, the city is red, but it's also the, the same homes are, are, and the same brick, the same red brick, sometimes it's painted in blue, yellow, light gray, and, and, and sometimes even in black, for instance, which is quite unusual. And you see sometimes in places like London, but not anywhere else in America. You know, you see different kinds of greys and you see different kinds of red, like in the pictures that you have uh, here in front of us. Uh, it, it's really important, I think, because it's part of the charm of the city, this variety of reds, in a way, is very important. It's very, it's very easy to say the city is red. Yes, it is. But it's not only red, because if it was systematically the same color, exactly the same color, in, in, every single, in every single one of the homes, perhaps it wouldn't be as attractive as in fact it is. There is red, and that's the predominant color. But there's also other colors that interact with that pattern, if you wish, of red and that are somehow highlighted against that red. And sometimes when the color, when the color is in fact the same, uh, in, for example, in the two red houses, that the red brick houses that you see on, your, on the right, sorry, then the color of an architectural element, such as, for example, the door, you know, becomes different. Or the or the or the Shutter. or the shutters become become you know highlighted in blue, for instance. So it's either the color of the brick or the color of an architectural element, the door or the trim within the window that provides a sense of uh, difference, if you will. The other thing that the other thing that became really important for us is uh, it's an older tradition in a way. The tradition of, um, the, of quilting in a, in a, in town, and for us it is important because it's a testament to the to the to the history of the place. It's part of the material culture of the place. It's part of you know what somebody in town was able to do with her hands, you know, and that in fact represents the town not only here but for those of us that come from from elsewhere. And both those living here and those those like us coming from elsewhere can recognize as something that is uh, that is beautiful in a way. And in those quilts, we also saw, we also realized, you know, how different colors interact with each other. We also saw geometric patterns that, in, in today's art world, might be seen as as a, as a, as abstract, if you wish. And we also see, we also saw, or discovered, if you will, that red was also an important component of those of those quilts. Not to say that it is all, they are always red, but there are many of them where, in fact, red becomes an important uh, color. I don't want to take calls. So no, no, no. You should. You should. Uh, you should. The, the, what what we really want to underline is how important were not only our walks through the streets and conversation with people, but also there was a, like a community engagement through questions and answers. And suddenly after that happened, we came back to the city, to Lancaster, and we started to see other things that we didn't see it before. So I think the, the process has been super, super interesting. Uh, because it really helped us tune in the project in a way that maybe sometimes is not that easy. So thank you because also those answers show us how much 
the community loves the city. And so for us it's a very important responsibility to, to respond or to try to, to display that love uh, of the community to the city. See, yes, I, um, just in case you didn't know, our accent comes from Argentina, where we were born a long time ago. And we have been trying to, to polish our English since we arrived, like um, 30 years that's ago. That's why I don't talk too much. Yeah, that's why Rosario doesn't like to speak as much. I, I happened to come to the stage when I was in high school and do it, was it? was an American field service student, you know, for a year in a little town in northern Wisconsin, and that's the only reason why my English is a little bit better, or the only foreigner in town. So, um, so I have to learn. Anyway, so, um, so in part, the things that we mentioned, and, and, and the things that, that you guys actually, the comments that you provide us with, you know, in a number of, uh, in a number of uh, forums that we had both in, in the internet and, 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 and in person, it kind of provides us the, the kind of uh, structure from where to build the, the, pro the, the, the project that we are going to share with you uh, tonight. The words that you see from, you know, words that we pick up from from uh, from your own comments. I don't know, Rosario, maybe you you are better at this. Yes, no, well, I don't need to read them, but but. Mostly, and, and the incredible thing is that there were like, I don't remember, more than 100 answers, or much more than, I think it's they were 160. But there were some patterns in the answers that really make us uh, aware, first, of how proud the community is of this free spirit that you can feel of the community in relations to be welcoming, open, um, proud of, of the beauty of the city. You see it when you walk through the city, how well taken care are the sidewalks, the flowers in the little pots, how you can paint the trims of the cows. So everything is started to get together and, uh, and that was the, the point of departure of how we tune in the project that we were working yeah. on. The sense of uh, the sense of pride that we uh, discover in your in your in your description of your city uh, uh, was was very was very important to us to tell you the truth. You know, very very important. Even there were some comments that were not happy with us. To put it some way, but also it showed that yes. because they love the city so much and they thought that maybe it was not we were not, we were not uh, the best choice. But that pushes up, pushes more to try to to to, to, perform. Proceed, to perform our task. But mainly the, the answers were very very inspiring in that uh, love that you are talking about. So and of course, by me, you you. Who, who is said, and uh, after which the plaza is to be is, is to be named, you know, and his life and and his inspiration that he has provided to the city, you know, to many in the city, to all in the city, really, you know, is is also a part of what we call our our inspiration inspirational motifs, if you know, from the city to elements of the material culture that are here and nowhere else. Even to, we just, I, I, it's a pity that I didn't get it. We, we just got a book today. I went to a really good antique bookstore, a dog store, I think it's called bookstore. And I, I got a book on a, on a, we have a big library in Rosario, we have 6,000 books, when in art and architecture. And I got a book on, on the, the design of the, the Sulkis, the, oh, the, 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 the Amish cards, actually. The bodies, the bodies. The bodies. Yeah. Uh, is in Spanish. Uh, the bodies. And, and the bodies, the design, even the design of the bodies is so inspiring, actually, and so unique, actually. There's so much care in the different types of bodies. At least in this book, there's called, you know, there are hundreds of them, different kinds of, for different occasions, etc. All of that was very uh, important for us. 
the project really started with this image in the world. This is, we need to, we need to, we need to share with you that this is not the project, only the project of Rosario and Roberto, the project of our, our studio. We are indeed part of a team. A big team, and a team that includes, in a way, the city, in a way, the parking authority, in a way, us, but also the architect of the project, who be, you know, who, be, who is doing the, the, the structure upon which, upon which we are, the, the parking structure, that is, of course, needed for utilitarian purposes, important utilitarian purposes. So you and perhaps others coming to town can park the center, more or less at the center of the city. Uh, um, there's also the landscape architect, because a very important part of this project, a very, very important, perhaps the most important part of this project, is the fact that there's going to be a public space in the center of town. You know, there's going to be well landscaped, well landscaped. And the interesting thing about this important uh, uh, public space, you know, there is to be, is to be, is to bring more green to the city, to the center of town, is that is to be supported and related, directly related, with a public function of the importance of the free public library of, uh, of Lancaster. And that is key because it is sometimes the case that one has a beautiful uh, uh, open air public space. Great, fantastic. There's always, there, there, is, there are times where one has a beautiful public building, but they're in separate places. For, for things to work best, you know, public buildings and public spaces need to be somehow together. Yeah, like in uh, piazzas in Italy, let's say. Most, some of the most beautiful public spaces in the world, in my opinion, are in, I don't have a, any, a, a, any Italian blood, so this is not a chauvinistic <laughs> statement. But it is true that spaces such as, you know, Piazza San Marco in Venice, eh, or Piazza della Signoria in Florence, you know, some of the most beautiful public spaces in the world. Yes, but, 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 let me just, yeah. because he can keep on talking and talking, so I have to interrupt him. <laughs> but um, also the fact that the plaza is celebrating the life of Barney Ewell makes another so important layer because yeah. it's almost unique that the city has come together to, 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 to decide to create a plaza with the monument and something to, to celebrate the life of uh, Barney Ewell. So I don't know if I pronounce it, pronounce it the, the last name, Ewell. <laughs> well, but uh, the thing is that it's such a unique place, such a, such a charge place in the center of the city that uh, it really is a unique opportunity. It's a really unique opportunity. So, uh, so the parking structure itself is a utilitarian structure, you know. But below the, 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 park, the, parking, um, the, park, the, the parking structure, the, below, below the parking structure, which is about one, two, three, four, five, six stories, approximately, we have the new, what is going to be the Lancaster Free Public Library. Okay, the new building of the Lancaster Free Public Library. And that is indeed really, really important, you know, because it brings uh, the most public of all functions, the library in a way, the one that, you know, help us he help bring together people of all kinds, you know, and, and adults and kids, you know, to the very same place. In this case, with the green, the public space directly in front of them. But uh, this is our canvas. This is what we start with. This is the facade that we start with. And what we are charged specifically with is to provide a new, if you will, to work with this facade to make it more um, attractive, if you will, more, more uh, amicable, perhaps, to these very important events that are happening. First and foremost, the celebration of, you know, Barnes Hill's life in the square as a whole. Second, and most importantly, the, the, the library, which is in my mind, it's always for the kids, which are the future. You know, books are always a message towards the future, and the future are the kids. You know, 
Uh, so, so it's a very important place, the, the library. But this is where we start with. That's what, this is what we have to work with in a way, to start. So the first thing that we thought of was, well, how can we create a structure within the budget that we have, which is limited, not the total budget that we, that things cost, but just a very slight, very small part of it. How can we create the kind of structure upon which to, to, uh, to create a more amiable facade, if you will, than the one that you guys saw. So, uh, so, uh, so, this, so we thought of, and then there are limitations that we all need to be aware of, limitations that have to do with that, you know, air has to go through. About 50% of the elevation of a parking garage needs to be open. It needs to be open because there are cars inside and, you know, there are fumes, etc., etc., etc. Ventilation, etc. So, so 50% approximately, 45, something to that effect, let's say, something to the effect of 50% consideration needs to remain open. So, how do you do, how do you hide the, the, the utilitarian structure, right? The ramps, etc., etc. On the one hand, we are making concrete and you can see them now already. How do we, how do we, um, how do we create this new? Structure for 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 a new facade in a way, and how do we keep it on budget? You know, it, it, it's not an it's not an easy challenge. So uh, so we thought of of a structure that is separated from the existing one, uh, and, and uh, that provides that possibility of of having. So, so, um, so, uh, so we we uh, we uh, we created a new, like a new plane upon which to to work upon in a way. That plane is separated from the, the concrete. A structure in a way to allow for air to go through and circulate, etc. Et and also, it's open, so also the air can can go can go through. And it's upon this structure that uh, it's also going to bring some 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 uh, color to the interior of the parking. And with this, you know, maybe we have this uh, statement, you know. As they, they are the project to transform.